Yes, you heard me, gold diggers. Because people have been saying, is it gold diggers? And I'm like, no, it's gold diggers. Welcome everyone. My name's Miss New Love and I'm your host. I'm with you every Monday at 8 p.m. In the studio, I have a lovely, amazing young lady doing lovely things, brilliant things actually, in the Ghanaian community. But before I introduce her, I would like to say a big thank you to my sponsors, like I always do, who are Noeki Online, Bell Chic Fashions, As Am, As Am I um, Beauty, and also Bless Nab Events. So as I said, I have a lovely lady in the studio. Her name is Tamara Asantua. She is the CEO and founder of Mr. and Miss Teen Ghana UK. Welcome, Tamara. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How are you? I'm super cold. I wish I was in Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I'm happy to be here and I'm excited. For I'm show. so happy to have you in the studio. As you know, it's International Women's Month it and is. it's also Ghana Independence Day on Wednesday. Yeah. So I had to have you here you. as you're a millennial Thank you doing so amazing much. things. Thank you within the Ghanaian um, culture and you know in our society so you're here <laughs> yeah. so tell us a bit about your business ventures now as it stands so I have a few things um Kente Fever Team Ghana UK um there's just a range of things that um I'm working towards um really working on um especially for this year um and just before summer hits which I'm really mm -hmm. excited to talk about mm -hmm. with you and Mr. and Ms. Exactly, Mr. <laughs> UK, yes. Um, that's one of, I would say, the biggest projects that I have. Um, it started off so small and just as an idea that I literally scribbled up on paper. And just to see it progress over the years, so this will actually be the third year of it running, it's just such a blessing. And sometimes I just sit back and just think, wow, it's, 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 the, yeah. it's literally, I can't believe how much and how much an interest the young people have yeah. shown to it. Um, so that's a, a, a big positive and I'm really excited to see it continuously grow. Yeah, it was, I mean, I was so happy and yeah. I feel so honoured that yeah. I was a part of it. Yes. I asked to be a judge yeah. for the very first exactly. show. Exactly. And to be honest, when I was asked to be a judge, I was thinking, okay, another pageant. <laughs> yes. You know, like, okay, here we go again, another pageant. Yeah. But, you know, it, was just, it just blew my mind. I was so excited, yeah. you know, and I really got into it. I yeah. played my role as a judge. Yeah. I brought my daughter and, you know, I think that's the best thing I did yeah. that year because it really changed her yeah. and yeah. it made her see, you know, the other things that Ghanaian yeah. youths are doing and then how they embrace the culture. Yeah. And I think she felt a little bit like I need to improve my game because she actually had a friend that was yeah. taking part, you know, oh, in wow. um, Mr. and Miss Teen Ghana that year. So it was really good. It's a really good incentive yeah. and, you know, yeah. so... Um, what else are you doing? So, as far as t Mr. and Miss Team Ghana UK, um, we are doing something called Kenta Fever, which is still linked to Team Ghana UK, um, but it's more about bringing the community together and having a range of cultures. So, it's not just aimed at the Ghanaian. Um, people with Ghanaian heritage, mm -hmm. it's aimed at all youths, okay. um, mainly because I wanted to make sure that we get all youths' attention, especially with everything that's happening um, in, the, in society at the moment. So it was just about doing something that can allow all youths to connect. Um, and it's a gathering where we'll have culture, where we'll have dance, um, Ghanaian music, mm -hmm. and it's just about everyone really embracing the Ghanaian culture and having everyone taking a little bit of Ghana as well as being together in one space. So it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited for Kente Fever. Everyone has to dress up in Kente and Ankara, <laughs> which is beautiful. Yes. I find it amazing when we see all types of cultures wearing um, the Ghanaian sort of wear. And mm -hmm. So I'm really excited for that. Um, okay, before I go a little bit deeper yeah. into the Kente Fever, mm -hmm. you was once a Miss yeah. Ghana UK yes, contest. <laughs> yeah. Um, how that. was that experience? I did it in 2014, um, and it seems so long ago. Um, it was an amazing experience. Um, I remember one of the reasons why I feel like it was good is because when I look at some of the Mr. and Miss Team Ghana UK candidates, mm -hmm. I sort of remember what it's like to be in, within a competition. Mm -hmm. And it's either you're really nervous and you get really worried about what you're going to do, or you kind of are calm and you kind of just really enjoy the experience of meeting new people because I remember I met so many people. Mm -hmm. um, there's some people who I still communicate with today um, yeah. who are also doing amazing okay. things. So it's really nice to sort of get to know people okay. that you wouldn't normally meet on a daily basis. So I think that was an experience for that 
okay. meeting people. <laughs> so do you think being a Miss Ghana UK contestant has made you, you know, the woman you are today or helped form the person that you are today? I would say it was really good for networking, like absolutely amazing platform for networking. Um, the fact that I was introduced to so many people um, that are Ghanaian, mm. loads of Ghanaian women who want to do amazing things. So even one of the past contestants mm -hmm. that I was with, her name's Jemima, and she's now oh, yes. gone on to, yeah, to <laughs> Jemima is lovely. Yeah, she's, mm -hmm. she's the founder of something called Melanin Beauty Live, which is absolutely an amazing platform. Um, there's also someone called Louise, or she actually won mm -hmm. that year. And okay. she, yeah, she what year was that? 2014. That Okay. Yeah, it's not so, too far ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's also doing amazing things with youth as well. So it was amazing that so many of us have become and done something after that and not just left it at 2014 and not gone on to do anything. So I would say yes, it's really it was really good for that. Okay. So <laughs> you know now in the UK there's so many beauty pageants. Yeah. Um, the pageant um, treat yes. um, industry is yeah. very. I would say it's quite congested right yeah. now. What what what's your views on? So that now, like now, people are just doing Miss yes, exactly. Curve, Miss, exactly. you know, Miss British exactly Beauty that. Curve, and um, there's so many. What are your views on the whole pageant free world? Well, I feel <laughs> completely, I agree, um, mm -hmm. and that was one of the reasons why Mr. and Miss Teen Ghana UK was so important because we aren't a beauty pageant, we're all about businesses and business ventures. So, we wanted to make sure that every single aspect of it didn't have you know swimwear and oh we're going to be crowned so even when we do select our winners mm -hmm. they're not crowned we call them young ambassadors okay. because we believe that they're role models and they're sort of setting an example to society and showing them that you know this is what youths are doing mm -hmm. this is what's out there for youths. this is what they believe in and they can do so just give them an opportunity um, because a lot of young people are seen as you know the scapegoat and you know they're doing badly and oh they're the reason for this and that um, so for me I feel like Team Ghana UK goes against the beauty pageant world mm -hmm. and we showcase business ideas and business ventures and give them a platform to really show what they can do and become in life which is amazing it's doing really really well so yeah okay. <laughs> exciting so it's called Mr mm -hmm. and Miss Team Ghana yes, UK so why did you decide to you know, let the guys enter and... So, um, I feel like with youth today, um, especially as it's a venture for businesses, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be just targeted at women because a lot of beauty pageants are just, you know, women and mm -hmm. girls doing this and girls doing that. Yeah. But there isn't anything for young people, especially young men and young boys. So it would be nice that, especially with everything that is going on, mm -hmm. there is a platform for young boys mm -hmm. to sort of do things and, you know, get onto things and just start doing whatever it is that they feel will benefit them so I'm really excited and happy that we did include them because it is doing really well okay that's good so um, back to Kente Fever mm -hmm. you've explained it's like a cultural event yes. for under 16s yeah, yeah. for them to you know come and show their embrace the Ghanaian culture yeah. and it's not just for them it's for other people that yeah. are interested in you know our Ghanaian culture heritage and all that <laughs> stuff but some would say realistically it's just a rave for mm -hmm. under 16 <laughs> you yes, know yeah. some would say that yes, it's just a course. rave like so what you know security measures do you have in place because they even though it's a good incentive a lot mm -hmm. of parents yeah. would be worried you yes, know letting course. their child come you know of what's course. happening in our community yeah, of course, of course. we've lost a lot of young Ghanaian mm -hmm. guys you know to mm -hmm. knife crime mm -hmm. so what security measures do you have in place to ensure that you know the under 16s are safe mm -hmm. at your event obviously mm -hmm. you can't you know, you're not God, you of can't course, stop things from course, happening, but what preventions do you have in place? So one of the main things that we've done is we do obviously have security, but we've allowed it to be within a community centre. Okay. So that's one of the main things that we've done. Mm -hmm. We also will have a charity section mm -hmm. um, where someone will actually come and speak about youth violence and knife crime as um, a section of um, Kenta Fever okay. to raise awareness of it. Um, and we will also have like a store where um, sickle cell um, okay. will be spoken about just because it is really popular um, within the black community. Um, so we have little breaks within um, Kenta Fever mm -hmm. to not just make it about dance and you know people just dancing constantly mm -hmm. we also will have adwa dancing yeah. and all of these things um 
as well um, we haven't just restricted it to just kids if parents do want to come along mm -hmm. they want to sort of hover up we have like a hub section okay. where parents can actually also stay they can find out about Team Ghana um, okay. and we so have made it more yes, like a for families just to come okay. along so and really um, enjoy Kenta Fever okay well. so what's the timing of the event so it starts is it a daytime six, thing or it starts at 6 p.m. and it will finish at 11 p.m. strictly um, and we've made sure that it's right next to a station to ensure that everyone gets home safely. Okay. We also have parents who will be um, around just to help, and around yeah, just to to make help it more around. of a exactly to make it like a family environment um, for them. So it's really really exciting, and yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, that's good. It sounds positive. Yeah. It sounds good. <laughs> I might allow my daughter to come. <laughs> <laughs> I just wait and I her to come. So you host other monthly events. Yes, yes. You know, what events do you host? Um, so we have loads of things. So my partner actually founded something called Day Talks, which okay. is a day party. Okay. That's not... Um, hosted at young people mm -hmm. but it's for um just people to really get together and celebrate because a lot of people are sort of over partying all night some mm -hmm. people just like to be in a place where they can network they can um, connect with people so day talks is all about that um the first one was in pitch and okay. the second one was in magic roundabout which is an old street and that's a really amazing place for London where there's loads of arts and culture and so it was really really good for that and um, yeah I was really excited and okay. helping out. <laughs> if you've just joined us we have the founder and CEO of Mr and Miss Teen Ghana UK in the studio with us. <laughs> Her name is Tamara Santwa and she's doing amazing things within the Ghanaian community. Mm -hmm. She embraces her culture and most of you know her business ventures and the things that she does. So please follow us on YouTube, subscribe to Omega Live TV, we're here every week, Monday at 8pm, and also live here on Facebook, Omega Live TV. <laughs> so Tamara, you're also into fashion, yes, and um, you do a lot of event coordination yes. within the fashion, um, yes. well not fashion industry as such, mm -hmm. but in the Ghanaian community. Yes, so that's correct. So exactly um, that at the moment, been um, I've been, I think for the past four years it's been, I've been working um, as part of Ghana Party in the Parks team and okay. coordinating the fashion show, which is really, really exciting, mm -hmm. especially for the young ones who love Ghana Party in the Park. It's like a big festival of Ghanaian culture, but over recent years everyone is getting involved in that and that's been really really exciting there's another one coming up this summer which i'm really looking forward to um so yeah that is amazing um i really enjoy doing that yeah <laughs> so everything is about ghana literally yes. that you do but yeah. i mean in your home do you speak tree yes i do, do yes you, i do, do. You, you know prepare Ghana. yes <laughs> Yes, I do. Yeah. So within my home, it's the same. Um, my culture is really important to me. And I think it's really important um, that we spread culture towards the younger generation, yeah. especially now. I feel like before, especially with parents, a lot of parents naturally just spoke tree and yeah. no one spoke English at all. Mm -hmm. But now that um, I would say people are, um, as we're getting older, a lot of the new parents aren't speaking tree with their um their children, children and things like that. so a lot of them don't speak um, our language and I feel like it is really important um, because it's that little piece of home um, yeah. so it's really really important that yeah we do keep it on and Team Ghana have actually started doing um, tree lessons for the okay, young really people good. yes as part of our mentoring program really so good. we're really looking forward to that um, because not everyone does speak it and we don't want people to feel like I can't apply because I don't speak the language um, so that is one thing that we've started to incorporate just so that everyone feels welcome and also takes a part of our culture away when they do take part in it Okay, so, yeah. so when you was, um, you know, coordinating Mr. and Miss Teen Ghana, yeah. did you notice, like, any tribalism amongst the contestants, <laughs> you know, the ones that were Ga, the ones that were Ewe, the ones that were Shanti? I, I mean, how mm. how did they deal with that now? Because, you so, know, when we were young, it was yes, like, oh, it was, Shanti. Yes, of yeah. course. I feel like with now, what we did was we asked them to add a little bit of culture when they did their auditions. Okay. And it was interesting because we only had this year two contestants who didn't speak tree, they just spoke Ga. And okay. what they did was like a traditional dance, which was mm -hmm. amazing. It was really nice to, to, to see that. Mm -hmm. So we, when we do our auditions, ask them to put an aspect of tradition in it just mm -hmm. to make sure that they, they are understand. keeping yeah. the tradition and the cultures of Ghana as well. Um, because it is Mr. and Miss Teen Ghana, not just Mr. and Miss Teen UK. So it's really important that that some sort of aspect of tradition is 
kept within it. Um, so we're really strong and strict on that. Um, but it, it works out um, because a lot of them enjoy it. They take something from it. And even those who don't speak tree, they'll come up come out of mm -hmm. it saying something um, which is amazing. Really so how, how do you split the role equally between the winners because you have a male winner yes. and a female winner. Yes. So how do you split the roles and make sure that they're both getting you know the best out of being you know the yeah. winner and stuff like that because sometimes it feels like yeah. the girls are more course, you know get more course, attention course, yeah. and you know that's I, I, I agree. So even with, for example, let's say the hampers, like it was much easier with mm -hmm. the girls having, you know, free weave and mm -hmm. free makeup. Whereas the males, it's quite hard it's to harder, sort of yeah. see what is it that you want. Mm -hmm. And but what we do is we split everyone up with a mentor. Okay. And um, there is um, a brand called The Future of Ghana who have yes, also I've said heard that about yes, them. <laughs> they um, actually partnered with us this year to okay. offer our prize winners a mentorship. Okay. So we was able to split them up and give them mentors. So each of them had um, industry help in what they wanted to do. So that made it so much easier for us to say, okay, does Rim wants to do this and Nathaniel wants to do this, therefore this mentor will go with him and that mentor will go with her. Um, and that equally gave them an opportunity to say, this is what I would like for the year, please help me with this. Um, and it's worked out amazingly well. Um, Desiree's done her first event and Nathaniel's doing his one in April, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so <laughs> with the last contestants, mm -hmm. Ohimar and Samson? Yeah, yeah. Is it Samson? Yeah, Samuel. Samuel. <laughs> Samuel. Oh my gosh, that's it. He'll kill me. But yeah, so what have they gone on to do now? Because I know Ohimar, you yes. know, she's gone into the hosting yes, and all yes, that stuff. Yes. So, so Ohimar Faye's done absolutely amazing things um she's gone out to do hosting she's mm. constantly doing things every single day um she's going to events um even on her own page she mm. has like mentoring things she has something called ohima's future future and um, business where she's opened up her own business oh, wow. and samuel's doing a lot of motivational speaking okay. within his uni he does like these dance hubs to make people feel comfortable so they've done a lot for themselves mm -hmm. and that's been amazing because it was the first one mm -hmm. so we didn't really know what to expect and yeah it's it's been such a blessing seeing that they're still doing whatever it is that they want to do um and that that just puts a smile on my face mm -hmm. um, because it's like whatever they said they were going to do they're still doing it so that's and, you, and you've seen growth within yeah, them exactly which is that, the most important exactly thing. that so who's like who's your the person that you ad admire within the Ghanaian Community. community not even like who's Ghanaian that you admire I would say, worldwide internationally like oh, I would say I really admire that Ghanaian at the moment Denta mm -hmm. um, she is doing absolutely amazing um, mm -hmm. when I look at the things that she's doing it's not just within the UK it's mm -hmm. in Ghana as well yes. Um, and her brand is so strong yeah, and right. it, it captures everyone it's not mm -hmm. for a, spe a specific age group it's the young people. She's doing Guba Korea. Yeah, she has the Guba Expo. She has everything. So I feel like when I look at her, I'm just like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. And I hope that one day I can be just as an, as amazing as her and can branch out and do all these little things. Um, so yeah, she's really, really inspiring. Really inspiring. Okay, so you said she inspires you, and mm -hmm. obviously I can see that you know with Mr. Miss Teen Ghana yeah. it's not just about the pageant it's, yeah. it's a whole movement yes of course so what other plans do you have to like you know like subsidiary events mm -hmm. that would come from the pageant I mean what other ideas what other things do you so have? one of our main ideas is based around youth violence and knife crime um, and we actually want to start a campaign and okay. a movement um, so we'll be going to parks we'll be going to schools and talking within schools um, and just really um, kind of getting people mm -hmm. to sort of put down knife and sort of just mm -hmm. talk have conversations about youth violence and knife crime but also engage parents as well mm -hmm. because i feel like it's really important for us to engage parents because sometimes they just don't understand mm -hmm. um so that that's something that i'm looking forward to doing okay mm -hmm. amazing so what challenges do have you faced you know being a ceo mm -hmm. of mr and miss teen ghana i mean it's you spoke about all the positive yeah. things but what have been the negative things and how do you balance everything working, being yeah, a mother, being a <laughs> wife. Yes. I would say what's really um, challenging is keeping your personal life as well as making sure your business is running smoothly. Mm -hmm. So there will be some times where I would say, okay, today I want to read this book, but then I will end up maybe planning something for Teen Ghana mm -hmm. UK. Yeah. And it's like, it's become 
my life as well mm. it's like this is my baby um and it's amazing because it's hard incorporating things but sometimes everything interlinks so it's just it's crazy how last year i got into teaching i've been teaching um within um, a sixth form and teaching okay, young wow. people yeah and it's amazing how that works sure out that's with, your yeah horizon yeah it has well. and it's amazing how that links in with team ghana uk um and young people and working with them so it's just really exciting and amazing how everything does actually plan, plan out in the end <laughs> okay, yeah. so you recently um had an event beauty yes. in the board yes beauty in bold beauty in board yes That's it. beauty in board <laughs> yeah so and that um beauty in board was um founded by the winner of yes. mr and Ms. Yes. Garner, the female winner yes 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 so, so can you Tell me a bit of more course. about that. So Beauty and Bold was actually, it was founded by Team Ghana UK, but created by Desiree. And so it was her idea. Was her idea. Yes, okay. yes. So it was what she wanted to do and why she said she wanted to win. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. yes, yeah, so Team Ghana UK wanted to make sure that happened. So um, we sat down with her. We talked about her idea and how best she can execute it. Okay. And her idea was to raise awareness for women with alopecia, mm -hmm. which is absolutely amazing because it's not happening, people aren't doing it at the yeah, moment. Um, and it was really nice because we had a variety of people. You also came, which yes. was amazing. Um, it was just beautiful um, how that event turned out. Um, and we had uh, social influencers and just a range of everything. But that was a really, really amazing event. Really yeah, um, a lady reached out to me from Ghana about oh, that. Really? So I think it's something you should consider yeah. maybe taking it for Ghana. Yeah, because that's amazing. The awareness is not there. Of that, course not, yeah. You know, a lot of people kind of tease her, bully yeah. her. She's yeah. actually quite a public, she's a really? public figure, yeah. That's but amazing. she wears wigs a lot, so... She was just telling me her story. She reached out to me. Wow, that's absolutely so. amazing. Yeah, I feel like it's something that a lot of people kind of shy away from, especially within the black community. Um, so it's something that, that when she said she wanted to do it, it immediately drew us to her. And we said, wow, this is amazing. And um, I guess the judges also saw how much of an amazing idea that is, and that's why she won. So, yeah, I was really impressed with that when she said that's what she wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's International Women's Month. It is. So, apart from Denta, I said, you know, Ghanaian, so obviously you had to mention a Ghanaian yes. lady, but you know what other women inspire you so this is going to sound so cliche <laughs> but my mum inspires mm -hmm. me so so much mm -hmm. um she really really inspires me because she constantly does whatever it is that she wants to do um she's actually moved to qatar this year oh, wow. um yeah for her it's like her 50th birthday like 15 new fresh start oh, um wow. And um, she's yeah, she's a midwife and she's um, actually working out there doing midwifery. Um, and that inspires me because it shows that there isn't an age to success. Um, and if you want to do something, nothing should stop yeah, you. You should, should do it. You. doesn't matter what. So that, that inspires me a lot. Um, so, yeah, she's one of my biggest inspirations. <laughs> so you went to uni. What did you study? Yes, I studied uni? journalism, um, which kind of links with English. Um, yeah, it kind of links with English. Um, because um yeah that's what i'm teaching um the okay, young people the yeah um so yeah i really enjoyed it i focused a lot on broadcast journalism and speaking um, okay. and i guess that's panned out because i do yeah, a lot of a speaking lot of <laughs> 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 so okay education is very important yeah. academic education yeah. and um you know everything you do around miss teen gunners and what you're doing now is quite creative yeah. even though professionally you know that's like an academic yeah. type of profession so what advice would you give to young people that are creatives like you know the importance of education in terms of being a creative mm. you know is it important do you think it's important to study academically even though you're creative does that I, make sense i understand what you're saying i would say that being a creative can come from anything and creativity forms from absolutely yes. anything like even here sitting in the studio i could be looking at the flower mm -hmm. and something could be forming so i would say that even though academia is so important mm -hmm. if it's something that is not possible for you mm -hmm. don't stop it doesn't put a shot to your success mm -hmm. at all. But I would say educating yourself as you go along is also amazing. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be within um, school. You need to go to school, I would say. The school is absolutely important, but it's not 
the final if you're unable to go to let's say university you can still find other ways of studying there are but reading books is a form of education um tutoring is a form of education university isn't the only answer to education there's also apprenticeships um so i would say that it's not the final route but educating yourself constantly is absolutely amazing and there isn't an age to educating yourself, so I would say constantly educate yourself, be it reading, watching TV, um, speaking to people, networking, that's all forms of educating yourself. So, um, yeah, I advise everyone to, to continue with that. <laughs> so what advice would you give to someone who wants to start out a business, you know, in terms of, um, how can I say, bringing people back to Ghana in terms of mm -hmm. tourism because mm -hmm. that's a part of what you do yeah. as well how yeah. you know what advice would you give to someone who doesn't know much about their Ghanaian heritage yeah. and culture and wants to do something that mm -hmm. you know promotes that well I would say that Ghana is just it's it's completely mm -hmm. changed. It's literally the new Miami, people yes. call it. And this year is the year of return. return. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are actually going back to Ghana this year. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of celebrities. Yes. A lot of people who aren't Ghanaian mm -hmm. are also coming in. So I would say this is the best year to go out and do mm -hmm. something. If you've never been to Ghana, take this year, take this opportunity to go and see why is it that so many people are going back? Why is it the year of return? Mm -hmm. um, because there's so many opportunities there, be it within the food industry, the music industry, um, properties. There are so many different ventures that you can go into um, just because so many people are interested in being mm -hmm. a part and seeing our culture. Um, so I would say definitely go back, especially this year, and get yourself into whatever it is that you want to get yourself into. Okay. So going back to the knife crime, I know it's not such a positive um, yeah. topic, Yeah. but going back to the knife crime, you mentioned that you're going to be doing um, something to do yeah. with that. So could you elaborate sure. so that people that sure. are watching um, would know? Sure. So um, Nathaniel's idea is based all around youth youth crime and knife violence so we're going to be actually hosting an event within his school which okay. is in south london okay. um and we will have a range of people who have been involved with youth violence and knife crime as a panel and um, just sort of speaking to young people sort of advising them and telling them you know this is how i was before um you might be going through this but it's okay and it's just a stage um, so we'll have a range of those people there just to speak to young people and, you know, just a really friendly environment within the school. We'll have games, we'll have dance, um, um, and we're hoping to also invite the mayor of South London, um, which will be amazing um, if that falls through. Um, so we're really looking forward to doing that campaign um, and raising awareness of youth crime because it's extremely increasing um, and it's quite worrying, especially because there are so many people dying so young. It's always 16, 15, and that's Team Ghana UK's target age group. So that's something that, that's an area that we're really, really um, focusing on. Focusing on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've mm -hmm. been in the studio with Tamara Santos. She's <laughs> the CEO and founder of Mr. and Miss Team Ghana. And she's doing amazing things within the Ghanaian community. Most of her business ventures include Ghanaian culture, mm -hmm. include Ghanaian culture. So um, please follow us on um, Omega Live TV on YouTube, subscribe. We're here every Monday. We bring to you the best of the, we bring to you the best of people doing amazing things within their communities, societies and various professions. Mm -hmm. And we're also live here on Facebook. So lastly, <laughs> Samara, before we leave, mm -hmm. can you please tell us where we can find you on all your social media? So my personal um, Instagram is at Mara's Room, so that's M-A-R-A-S and then Room, but it's all together. And then the brand and businesses Instagram is at Teen Ghana UK, which is all together. Uh, make sure that you follow them on Instagram. Um, our website is www.teenghanauk.co.uk um, and we are also on Facebook as Team Ghana UK so please do like our page um, and you can keep up to date with us and see all of our events and everything that we're doing and that would be amazing. <laughs> so you'd be watching Gold Diggers and we started today at 8pm, it, it was a little bit late actually. <laughs> 
But yes, we're here every Monday at 8pm, as I mentioned before, we had Tamara Asanto in the studio with us and she's been an amazing, you know, she's inspired us, told us about her business ventures, what she's planning to do in the future, you know, how she balances her life as a mother, of mm -hmm. a wife, you know, as a teacher professionally. So thank you, Tamara. Thank you, thank you so, you so much, much for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Until next week, thank you so much for watching Gold Diggers. Thank you.